Yeah, what are you going to uh, compare it to? 1 over k. Yeah, it looks like 1 over k, right? So our instinct says it's probably convergence conditioning. But let's see if we can go through the, the work to justify that. So if I let a m be k, or I guess a k, be a uh, k squared over k cubed plus 1. Uh, this isn't the one I did the other day, is it? No. It looks pretty similar, but it's, it's not the same one, I don't think so. All right, so k squared over k cubed plus 1. Let's say a k. Uh, oh, I want b k, I guess, to be um, whatever I'm comparing this to, which is 1 over k. Uh, if I look at the limit, z goes to infinity, of a k divided by b k, that is going to be the limit. So k goes to infinity of k squared over k cubed plus 1 times k over 1, uh, which is the limit as k goes to infinity of k cubed over k cubed plus 1. I have checked with the, uh, the people who are grading this, um, some of which are me, but I don't remember if I'm grading this kind of thing or not. But uh, the point is, you can go ahead and say that that's 1. You don't have to go through L'Hopital three times or anything like that. That's okay. Um, the only time that you're really going to have to do L'Hopital is if you have two different kinds of functions. If you have a log over a polynomial, you know it's going to zero, but go ahead and do the L'Hopital. Uh, but yeah, if you've got polynomials on the top and the bottom, like in this case, you know how to evaluate these, you look at your leading terms, it's okay. All right, so what does that tell you? We have to say since the sum of BK diverges, one to infinity, our series does not converge absolutely uh, by limit comparison test. Okay, so what's your uh, your next level? Um, our claim is it converges conditionally okay uh, the reasoning behind that is you have to go into alternating series test so what are the two things you have to show for alternating series test it goes to zero yeah terms go to zero times the decreasing so certainly the limit as k goes to infinity of k squared over k cubed plus 1 uh, is equal to 0. That's true. And uh, what's the other thing? I need to know that these terms are decreasing. Now, I guess you could show that the, uh, the k term is bigger than the k plus first term, but that would involve showing that some strange looking cubic is always positive. Um, that seems like a bad idea. Uh, anytime you want to show something's decreasing, just look at the derivative. So, if f of x is x squared over x cubed plus 1, then f prime of x is what? Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom uh, the x squared over the bottom squared. Okay, so let's do some simplifying. Uh, what's uh, dominant term? Yeah, there's definitely a, I've got, what, 2x to the 4th minus 3x to the 4th, right? So I've got negative x to the 4th plus 2x, okay. Uh, and this is over x cubed plus 1 squared. Okay, so we go one step further. Factor out an x, and then I have 2 minus x cubed over x cubed plus 1 squared. Uh, can you see where this is always going to be negative as long as x is strictly bigger than 1, right? So greater than or equal to 2. And uh, that's good enough. It just has to be decreasing eventually. Uh, so what have we shown? We've shown that f of x is decreasing. So your terms are decreasing. So in other words, a1 is bigger than a2, is bigger than a3, and so on. 
So the series converges by alternating series test. Okay, so a couple of things about this. Uh, I've had people just try and plug in numbers, like if you plug in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, yes, you can see that your series terms are decreasing. That does not constitute proof. That just shows that the first three of them are decreasing, right? So getting, like, if you if you want to plug in numbers to see what you think it's doing, that's okay, uh, but it's not going to be worth your credit uh, on the exam. So uh, don't do thinking that's going to be enough. Uh, the other thing is, do you see why ratio test is going to be absolutely useless on a series like this? looks like polynomials over polynomials, uh, ratio test is blind to things that look like p-series, right? Uh, it's a ratio test, even if you're looking for absolute convergence, because I had somebody tell me this morning, well, if you have, if you converge by ratio test, you get absolute convergence. That's true, but it's not the only way to get absolute convergence, right? So uh, what could I change about this series to make it converge absolutely? Like what if I change it to k squared over k to the fourth plus one? Yeah. Then you get absolute convergence because your limit convergence test would give you convergence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they could ask you either one. It's you know if they uh, if they give you one that converges absolutely, that's great. That means there's less work because then you don't have to mess with alternating series tests at all, right? So if it converges absolutely, you're done. Uh, and if it doesn't, then go ahead into alternating series tests. We okay with these? Okay. Uh, the other thing I didn't address last time was anything to do with Taylor series. Uh, so let me do at least an interval of convergence and a uh, uh, find a Taylor series. Was that the end of problem nine? Yeah, that was the end of, uh, of problem nine. Okay. Uh, oh, well, take a look at this. Um, f of x was this thing. And so this says that uh, f um, that our terms are decreasing past the second one, right? So it's not that it's convergent when x is greater than two. There's no x's in this problem, right? Uh, but it is that uh, your series or your terms are eventually decreasing, and that's all you need for alternating series tests. So if they had asked where does it converge, since it converges conditionally, you could just um, there is no where, yeah. right? There's nothing unknown in this. Okay. So, yeah, there's just three layers. Uh, it's just, I mean, this is a series made of numbers, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, there's no X's or anything like in that. So there's, there's no where, there's no interval. Um, that's only for things like power okay. series. Yeah, so your answer should be one of these three things. Uh, converges absolutely, converges conditionally. So, yeah, so the, the actual answer to that that you would box would be converges conditionally. All right. So here's a good, uh, yeah, radius and interval of convergence. All right. So I know they do a lot of these by root test in the uh, in the homework. If you go into the explanations and whatnot, Pearson does a lot of these by root test. I don't know why, because that's usually harder. Uh, keep in mind that root tests and ratio tests will always give you the same conclusion. Uh, they're inconclusive at the same points, which is where your, your endpoints of your interval are. So I always do these things by ratio test. Because you're going to do, uh, what, AK... It's going to be negative 1 to the k, x minus 2 to the k, <coughs> over k times 4 to the k. Okay, a k plus 1, negative 1 to the k plus 1, x minus 2 to the k plus 1, over k plus 1, 4 to the k plus 1. Okay, now what I want is the limit as, n goes, or as k goes to infinity, of the absolute value of AK plus 1 over AK. So, absolute value basically means we don't care about those negative ones, right? So, what I'm going to get here is absolute value of X minus 2 to the K plus 1 over K plus 1 times 4 to the K plus 1 
And then the reciprocal of AK, I've got X minus 2 to the K, and I've got K times 4 to the K. Oh, and I've got dots here because I didn't put limits. <coughs> a little bit finicky about that. So, all right. <coughs> Yeah, you could probably do it this way. So let's go ahead and do the limit at the, at the very end. Yeah. Uh, as long as you don't say that the ratio is equal to the limit anywhere, then I think you're okay. So this is absolute value of, uh, it's just going to be x minus 2 on top, and it's going to be just a 4 on the bottom times. Uh, k over k plus 1, right? So, the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a k plus 1 over a k uh, is the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of x minus 2 over 4 times k over k plus 1. I'm sorry if my k's look like 4. Oh, how do you get a k on the bottom? Where at? Oh, okay. That's it. Okay, so this limit um, should just go to one, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm doing. Uh, so this is just absolute value of x minus two over four. Okay, so I need this to be less than one, right? So um, it's, it's going to converge uh, when that's true. So that says it definitely converges when absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 4, right? Now, from this, you can get your, uh, your radius of convergence automatically, right? Do you see why your radius is going to be 4? Because this says the distance from x to 2 has got to be less than 4. So I'm going 4 units on either direction. So this also means that x minus 2 is between 4 and negative 4. So that means x is between 6 and negative 2. So the other way to get your radius of convergence from your interval, <coughs> so this goes from negative 2 to 6. This distance here is 8, right? Mm -hmm. So you could call that the diameter of this interval. That's how big it is. So the radius should be half of that. The radius should be uh, 4. So it's always half the length of your interval. So uh, even if all you have is the interval and you don't even have the center, well, the center's got to be right in the middle. It's the average of these two. And then your radius is the di distance from the center to the outside. All right. Another endpoint test? Yeah, we got yes. Testing. Okay, that's what I was going to see. Is this where everybody gets docked on these things. Every power series problem is basically three problems. Right? Because you got that series, and you also got to check the endpoints. Now, we check the endpoints. All right. So when x is equal to 6, uh, what I've got in the series is going to be the sum negative 1 to k times 6 minus 2 to the k over k times 4 to the k. Over 1 to the k, okay. So what I've got is the sum of negative 1 to the k uh, times 4 to the k over k times 4 to the k. Four, uh, 4 to the k is going to cancel out. So what I have looks like the alternating harmonic series, right? Does that converge or diverge? <coughs> yeah. This converges because it's a known series. It's the alternating harmonic series. It's the same thing as two. I don't know if it will be or not. Because I think that negative one to the k is going to mess us up. So k equals one to infinity. So at x equals negative two, I've got negative one to the k. And I've got negative 2 minus 2 to the k. The k is 4 to the k. 
Yeah, do you see where my negatives are going to cancel out and I'm always going to get a positive number here? This was kind of tricky because the endpoints are usually reversed from this. So this is k equals 1 to infinity. Uh, I've got negative 1 to the k, negative 4 to the k, over k times 4 to the k. So this is actually just going to end up being the regular harmonic series. So this diverges because it's a harmonic series. Okay, so what's our conclusion? What is my interval of convergence? So it's definitely negative 2 to 6. Where's the parentheses? Where's the brackets? Bracket is 6. Bracket on 6, parentheses on negative 2, right? <laughs> so normally, if we have one of each, the bracket ends up showing up on the left. What was different about this one was we had the alternating part being given in the power series, right? And what it did was switch the positions of what's in there and what's not. All right. So same three steps for every power series. So like I say, you could probably do these with root tests, but I don't think it would be any easier because you'd have to deal with the case root of k, and I don't remember exactly what that does. Mm -hmm. So the negative 4 to the k cancel out all the negative and 4 to the k on the bottom? Yeah, because negative... 4 to the k is the same as 4 to the k times negative 1 to the k, right? And so what I've got is negative 1 to an even power, which is just 1. <coughs> All right. So we got an interval of convergence out of that. Now, as far as what they're going to ask you for a, uh, a Taylor polynomial, now I know they're not going to ask you this m question, so I'm going to disregard that. But... If the order Taylor polynomial, they could ask you that, or they could ask you for the actual Taylor series. I don't see one of those. So the one, um, the one on the, uh, in the May test they did out had more um, Okay, cool. The, um, okay. Okay, so look at it. I'm not going to work that one, but I'll work one a lot like it. Yeah. Did you say that the, uh, in, like in the air would not be on the test? Correct. All right, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, the capital M stuff with the air bounds and all of that is not on this test, that's on the line. Yeah, because they, they changed that like a couple of years ago because even though we cover it before this <laughs> test, nobody really figures out what's happening until the end of the semester with that because uh, it's kind of a stickier topic. Uh, you got a picture of that one? We'll figure that out. And then kind of series. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is something I've definitely seen before. All right. with a different example. It's a little bit off on that one. No, I fair enough. 
it's pretty close to, uh, to what you're looking at, right? So, okay. The final tail of polynomial is degree 4 for this guy. Uh, the center of x equal to 3. And also, um, that's part A. And then part B is going to be find the Taylor series. So if the, if the question is, and I, again, I want to distinguish between these two questions. If the question is find the series, and you're asking a question like how far out do we go out, all the way, right, because you need all infinitely many terms, that means you have to find a pattern in them and come up with a series representation for it. Uh, so let's do the first part first, because we're going to have to anyway. <coughs> and the stipulation on this one is you have to use Taylor's uh, theorem, you have to use the pattern and the derivatives. Uh, not modify a known series because this looks like a uh, it's a derivative of a um, of a geometric series you could do it that way if you want to but uh, but let's go for the pattern and the derivative so let's say f of x is uh, 5x minus 1 to the negative 2 so your derivative looks like negative 2 times 5x minus 1 to the negative 3 times 5 from the uh, chain rule right now, my advice on these is, as we've done in class, um, don't, um, like, don't multiply the negative 2 and the 5. Don't simplify these at every stage because you won't see the pattern. Uh, if you leave everything as factored as you can, you're more likely to see what's happening because factorials are building and powers are building and things like that. So, next derivative, uh, you've got negative 2 to negative 3 of 5x minus 1 to the negative 4, and you're going to have 5 squared. Next one, you're going to have the third derivative. You got negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 uh, times 5x minus 1 to the negative 5 and 5 cubed. So you can see at least two different structures building in this thing, right? Here I've got negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I've got 5x minus 1 to the negative 6, and I've got 5 to the 4. Okay, so, two pieces of information we can uh, we can glean from this. First of all, we can get our Taylor polynomial at degree 4, because now we got four derivatives, right? So in order to do that, I need to know what is f of 3, what is f prime of 3, f double prime of 3. I just need to plug in x equals 3 in all of these derivatives, right? This is one of the main things I've seen people do wrong on this is a lot of people will give me a series that has the derivatives of the function inside of it, right? Remember, these are supposed to give us coefficients which are numbers, not functions. So, f, and it's you know, wherever the center is, that's where you evaluate. So f of three is 14 to the negative two. Okay, f prime of three is negative 2 times 14 to the negative 3 times 5. F double prime of 3, well, I've got negative 2 times negative 3 times 14 to the negative 4 times 5 squared. And I'll just go through these. This is negative 10 over, hopefully your numbers won't be quite this bad, 2744. This one I've got, what, 25 times 6 on top, so I've got 150 over 14 times 14 times 196 is 38, 
25 times 24 is 3,000. That's going to be negative over whatever 14 to the fifth power is. Raise to the fifth. All right, these numbers keep getting bigger, but that's all right. Now this one is going to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. You see where they're alternating? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we've got is, uh, it looks like a, basically a 5 factorial there, times 5 raised to the 4. So I've got 75,000 on top, and on the bottom I've got uh, 14 to the 6, whatever that is. So we'll leave that. Okay. So if I wanted to write out the um, fourth order Taylor polynomial for this guy, That's going to be, let's call it p4 of x. Well, uh, f of 3 is 1 over 100, 196. It's going to be minus 10 over 2744 times x minus 3 plus 150 over, what was that, 14 cubed basically? No, 14 to the 4. All right, and x minus 3 squared, and I'm missing something here. You tell me what in just a minute. Minus 3,000 over 14 to the fifth of x minus 3 cubed plus 75,000 over 14 to the sixth of x minus 3 to the fourth. What am I missing? Yeah, okay, so this one's okay, this one's okay, because it's zero factorial and one factorial. That's going to have a two factorial, that one's going to have a three factorial, and a four factorial, right? So that's what your Taylor polynomial of degree four looks like. Now again, if you're coming out with these numbers, you're not going to see the pattern in them, you know, oh, well, 1, 10, 150, 3,000, 75,000, sure that's easy to recognize. So, uh, but from here, you can see what's happening in your derivatives at three, right? I think we've got this part. All I need to use is those guys. So for part B, if I want the series, I know that my nth coefficient is nth derivative at three divided by n factorial, right? So what do you think is happening with my nth derivative at 3? What structures do you see developing in this? Like what does this look like it's making? It's making some kind of a factorial, right? Okay, so let's see which one. My second derivative, well I've got 3, 2, and 1. My third derivative, factorial starts with a 4. My fourth derivative, my factorial starts with a 5. So what factorial do you think I'm going to have? It's going to be n plus 1, right? Because it's the number of derivatives I've taken and then one extra. Okay, so I've got that. Uh, how about all these negatives? How many of them do I have? Same as the number of derivatives, right? So I can do negative 1 to the n. Okay. And, or k if you're using that. What about 14? I have an awful lot of those. Yeah, uh, so it's going to be a 14 to the n plus 2 on the bottom, right? Uh, because, yeah, third derivative has 14 to the fifth on the bottom, fourth derivative has 14 to the sixth on the bottom, okay? All right, uh, and also we got fives. Is it just five to the n? Okay, so that's my nth derivative at three, and then also I'm dividing by n factorial, right? So, what is my uh, what is my series term here? What cancels out? What stays? Yeah, I've just got an n plus one, right? Uh, so I'm gonna have an n plus one times. I'm gonna go ahead and phrase that as uh, negative five to the n. You can do it separately if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, these are going to cancel, and then I've just got a 14 to the n plus 2. So that's what I'm looking at for my series term. Okay. So that means my power series 
is going to be a sum of things that look like n plus 1, negative 5 to the n, of 14 to the n plus 2. And what other piece do I need here? Mm -hmm. I need an x minus 3 to the nth power. And it looks like this is starting at um, 0. So, because I usually start at 0. All right, so do you see the difference between the two questions? Um, they each have their own drawbacks. In some sense, the series term is a little bit cleaner, just because you get a nice little formula out of it, whereas you get ugly numbers in your, uh, in your polynomial. But if you can't see the pattern, you can still do the polynomial, right? So uh, either of these questions is equally likely. You might get both as parts of the same question. I think that's how it was phrased in the, uh, uh, in the example that you had. All right. So what else do you want to see? We got time for probably one or two more. A lot more practice. Uh, we got this stuff. Take a look. We still got Friday too, but this is waste of time. So. Okay. Uh, you definitely won't get remainder on Taylor, but you might get remainder on alternating or integral. So. What's it? No. Yeah, no remainder there. Uh, but let me do a um, let me do a remainder question for uh, for alternating. Yeah. Quick question: Are they going to give us like ten, like the one they did in the homework, like ten uh, inverse? Let me see the one you're talking about. Oh, okay. oh ten inverse is five. Yeah. Um, they could, but it would. They're not going to ask you to do it this way. That. Um, I've seen those show up more in multiple choice questions than I have in the other ones. But let's let's go through one that's like that. So this was a question, a series of tan inverse of 5x. All right, so I would say you're going to get this from tweaking a known series. So first of all, if we had the series for tan x, or inverse tan x, we could get it from there. You just plug in 5x instead of x. So that part's easy to deal with. Where do we get inverse tangent from? Yeah, I know inverse tangent of x is the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. And this looks like a formula for a geometric series.